A lot of people have been inquiring about the new Pelican 8060. Seems there is a lack of reviews on the product at the moment, so I thought I would give it a shot. Most of you familiar with the company Pelican already know that they make very well made products. So when Pelican introduced a flashlight that looks somewhat like a mag and somewhat like something out of a cool movie, the curiosity began. For a size comparison, the Pelican 8060 is about the same size as a mag charger or a Streamlight SL20. In the video, the mag charger is setting at the bottom and you'll see the Pelican 8060 in the, in the top of the mag charger there, nearly the same size. With a battery, the 8060 is approximately 23 ounces. Picking up the mag charger, which is approximately 30 ounces, and the Pelican, they feel about the same weight. However, the weight is distributed differently between the two, giving each a unique feel. Both flashlights, however, feel much more secure and much heftier than the Streamlight SL20. The 8060 uses a nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery, giving the unit a six hour burn time. The best part is, after four hours of continuous use, the 8060 still gives off 190 lumens, what it is rated for. The flashlight starts to dim going into hours five and six. The 8060 can also be used with four C alkaline batteries. When using this type of battery, the peak output is 190 lumens and the burn time is 11 hours. This gives the flashlight enormous flexibility. In this shot you can see where the nickel metal hydride battery has been removed. The unit, the back comes off the unit, the battery slides out like in most flashlights. However, what makes this flashlight unique is that you can insert the 4C batteries and replace the rechargeable battery, giving you a longer burn time or if you don't have the optional car charger on you, you can uh, get some extra power. The 8060 also has heat sinks around here. The uh, LED light bulb gives off quite a bit of heat. The manual actually warns not to set the flashlight face down on a surface and leave it on. Doing this so may cause the bulb and or the surface it's on. If you look closely at the flashlight, they've cut grooves into the top right here. So if you turn the flashlight on, as you can see how bright this thing is, and set it down on a surface, you can still tell that the flashlight is on, keeping you from leaving it on by accident. By comparison, turning the mag light on, setting it down, you'll never know that you have your light on and you can be burning it the whole time. I guess now that uh, I turned it on once or twice, shining it at a surface is just ridiculous. The manual warns not to shine this in anybody's eyes, but being a law enforcement officer, it's one of the reasons I picked up this flashlight. The mag charger it has a nice beam, however, it's not as focused as the uh, Pelican 8060. So, in a situation where I need to uh, blind somebody or get them from looking at me, right now the light's on. It's pretty doggone bright. Alright, we're now in a semi-dark room at the moment. It's the best I could do. I'm going to turn on the Pelican 8060. You're going to see the focused beam. It doesn't have that donut in the center like some flashlights have. This is the beam you get. Really focused, no black spots, and a small flood area around it. Now I'm going to turn on my mag charger. You're going to see that little donut there in the middle. It's also pretty bright. Not quite as white and not quite as focused. Both flashlights are excellent. The 8060 just puts off a little bit more brightness. Both flashlights have been charged completely for the comparison. The Pelican 8060 comes with, well, the one I bought, with one AC adapter. It's got two LED lights on either side that are red when the unit's not charging in standby mode. You just push the unit down in there. The contacts will connect and it'll flash red. That means it's fast charging. It'll turn green when the unit is fully charged. You can also get a 12-volt adapter for your patrol car.